How's everybody doing today? This is Pete here at Spawn Fly Fish and we're going to jump into a mantis shrimp and if you saw on Instagram a few days ago uh, Josh posted a picture of a shrimp a customer had brought in they had no idea where it was from or what pattern it was so through a little research we found Robert Viverka's mantis shrimp and I think this is uh, the pattern that they brought in to us so we're going to tie Bob Viverka's mantis and this, we're going to change just a couple things like we always do. I can't just tie a, a regular standard pattern but um, mantis shrimp pretty important especially in the flats. You need something that lands softly, gets down a little bit and so let's just tie this thing in the hook or in the in the vise I should say. We've got the Gamakatsu SL45. This is a size 4. And for thread, I've got some Camel 6 aught Uni thread. And I just put a little bit of super glue on, on the thread wraps there. And now we're going to add some stealth chain. And this is a size large, and the color is uh, pale tan. And so, roughly one eye as far as spacing so give it another eye length and then I'm going to add these stealth chain eyes right in that area like so and so I've got a figure eight and now a wrap in front and back another figure eight front back figure eight back front figure eight front back I'm just going to keep repeating that and the pressure of course is coming after every straight wrap like this. On the X wraps, it's just to fill in the gap, get some positioning wraps, and then the straight across wraps are what gives that strength and pulls all those wraps together. I'll turn it over and keep repeating that pattern. And so if, if you're tying this at home, what you'll notice is there's a little bit of leeway or play on those eyes when you first add them, and now they don't bobble around at all that space in between has been filled in and tied down and that's what's going to give us our strength on these little bead chain eyes. And then we'll just bring this thread all the way to where it starts to curve. Now this is going to be the first little difference in patterns compared to Bob's pattern or Robert. And so for this I've got some spawn semi seal and this is UV steel head torch and this is going to just give another little trigger to this fly nothing crazy but we do want this thing to be seen and if you're chasing bonefish I mean these little triggers do help so I've got maybe two and a half inches worth of dubbing on the a little noodle here I'm just going to within three wraps forward and back I'm going to just keep going over itself and build a little ball there and so when I add another pinch on the top and we veil this it's going to help splay some of these fibers and just give a little bit of a more natural look so right on top there and behind our dubbing ball get a few good wraps and then I'm going to split these fibers evenly on both sides of the hook like so, pull it down, and then I'll veil the rest of these fibers over, bring that thread back, and now I can continue wrapping down on top of where we just put those. So the effect is a lot of color, uh, shrimpy fibers, antenna, whatever you want to call, mouth parts all coming out there. All right, so next thing is our eyes. And for the eyes, uh, we're using some size medium. I'm looking for my pack here. Anyway, these are easy shrimp eyes. And so what I'm going to do is you can see where that V is here back in the plastic. I want that as far forward as possible because on mantis shrimp, the eyes are a pretty big feature. And so now that I see where I need that, I'm going to just trim off this end so that it, it's going to finish right before those bead chain eyes. And from here, I can simply just start wrapping these eyes down on top of what would be the underside of the shank. And the only thing you have to be mindful of here is 
is keeping that flat tying portion on top of the, the shank. And if you do so, the eyes will, let me show you the underside, be on either side. You don't have to worry about keeping them separated, any of that stuff. These kind of are just too easy not to use. I love these, these easy shrimp eyes. Tie that down really well. All right, so, and now for our next element, uh, we've got some white craft fur here. And so let me just cut a pinch of this out. You don't need very much at all. Um, this stuff will condense down, of course, into water, but if you, I'm just getting some of this under fur, if you will, out of the, the butt ends. So as you see, it's a very small amount we're working with. It's very fine fiber and in the water it looks very shrimpy. But what, what, what I'm gonna do now is I've, I've got a couple markers over here on the side. And I'm sorry you guys can't see this part, but after I'm done, I will show you what I've, I'm looking for. So here's my marker and this is deep orange. And all I'm gonna do is make some bars across these fibers. Nothing crazy, nothing wide or anything like that. It's just gonna break up that pattern and mimic um, some of the coloration found in shrimp. So there you can see I've, I've barred those. And now what I'll do is right on top of those bars I've just made, I'm going to switch to a small brown marker. And I'm going to add just some dots right down each of those stripes and again this is you know completely up to you not a necessary step to catch fish however uh, if you're going to tie a cool fly go all the way and there you see I'll show you on your side we've got a nice patterned look so where I made those um, bars I'm going to want those visible from the top side of the fly so I'll position them like so when I tie them in so that the, the actual colored parts are on the opposite side. And now I'm looking for a length on these guys that's roughly two times the hook length. And then we'll just tie these in, make sure they're even on the bottom there and make sure your thread is getting all the way to cover your previous thread wraps. And once that's tied in securely, I'm going to trim out these butt fibers or the tag ends of, of our craft fur. And then let's go in here and do some cleanup work. Get any of these loose fibers trimmed out. They don't have any place in this fly. They're not going to help us, so let's just get rid of them. And then we can finish tying down these fibers. So already getting a little bit of a shrimpy look here and it only gets better all right nothing crazy thus far so now what we're going to do I'll show you the bottom side of that pretty shrimpy now we're gonna start adding some legs and Bob's idea with um, his design on this fly he didn't like the the shrimp flies that had all the legs coming out at one spot and you know with mantis shrimp there's a lot of movement uh, a couple key features that that get the fish going and he he really thought there wasn't a fly out there so what's going to happen here is i'm going to tie in a rubber leg on my side and then your side and you'll see the spacing but this first leg i want it to be tied in on the lower side of midway point and it'll make more sense as i get to your side here so i'll just tie one in on my side real quickly and then I'll come to your side and you can maybe see a little bit better. So the whole point is that these, these uh, legs need to be below the midline point so that they, they don't sit above the eyes of the fly. Once it's in the water, of course, they're going to be wiggling and moving wherever they want. But placement for now, lower side of the midline of that, that hook. So I'm going to turn this just slightly and catch that guy right like so. And now as I tie forward, what's going to happen is that's going to yep, right there meet up where the craft fur and that semi-seal 
kind of meet. And so first set, no problem. And so now we've got two more legs. And for the legs, I'm just using um, some root beer color Grizzly Micro legs from Hairline. And so all I'm looking at now is even spacing for the next two sets of legs. And I'm gonna repeat the same steps and then leave roughly, mm, let's say one eighth of an inch between each set of legs. Just enough to get about two or three uh, passes of dubbing through there is, is what I'm looking for. Let me roll this one down a little bit more. There we go. And there's leg number three of six. Of course you can put more legs in there if you really want to. It's, it's the beauty of tying your own flies. And so there's our roughly eighth of an inch between the first and second leg on your side now. And just one more set of legs to add. And then we'll be close to finished. So again, one eighth in between our, our last set and this set. Like so. And this may be a little time consuming compared to just adding all the legs in one spot, of course. However, we're going, we're going for a lot of movement here. A very mantis looking fly when it's done. And there we go. All right, let's get that thread all the way back. One more X and then I'm behind the eyes here. So now for some dubbing and this will finish the fly up. So I've got some hairline dubbing and this is just their regular dubbing in ginger. And then I've also got some Arizona diamond dub in light cream. And so I mixed that in a proportion of roughly six to one, six being the parts of Hairline's Ginger Dub, or Rabbit, and then one part being the Diamond Dub. And so what I've got is a color that looks very shrimpy, very neutral, and just hints of flash throughout. And all I'm going to do now is start getting a very thin noodle dubbed on my thread and we will actually dub all the way forward in between all those legs and then we'll dub back. Now on Robert's fly, you know, he had you dub a little bit, add a leg, dub a little bit, add the next set of legs and that's fine. By all means, if that's how you want to put this together, feel free to do so. Myself, I like the finished body look a little bit better doing it this way. There's more continuity, no gaps, you don't have to second guess how much dubbing did I really have in that previous section. This is just, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of a neat fly and this is definitely a way to achieve it. So now that I've got my thread dubbed on there, let's start working up. If there's a key to this, it's to make sure you're actually butting up against the, the legs before you go in between. And the reason being, we want all these legs flowing toward the front of the fly. So you see there, I've got pressure right behind that uh, third set of legs. So this is when I'll start pulling them back one at a time and getting the dubbing to fit in right there. So now I'll pull the forward two sets of legs out of the way, get a couple more thread wraps in there, and now I'm butted against that second set of legs. And at this point, Time to add more dubbing. And we'll probably add dubbing one more time yet before we finish this. So if there's a patient factor, this would be it. Be patient adding some dub and your fly will look a little bit cleaner, a little nicer, and the fish might just send you a thank you card. You never know. All right, got some more dub on there. And we'll just continue working forward. So now we're working in the, the front portion of our second set of legs. And I know I'm already against them or butted up to them. So at this point, I may work that thread somehow, possibly. 
gonna get out of Bob and Bodkin here. I'll come through the second set and forgive me for one second, it's a little tricky to see over to your side. And just make sure we're grabbing the right leg here. When all else fails, read the directions. And tab A into slot B, all that good stuff. All right, so now I've got those two rear legs out of there. And that one just does not want to cooperate today. There we go. That, now the craft fur is getting in on it. There, no worries. Again, here's that patience we were talking about. Once you've got that, that first wrap to separate, the rest should be somewhat easy. So now I really want to make sure I'm getting a good coverage right here where we tied in the rest of the materials at the head. And once you have that, just start working your way back again and dubbing the opposite way now toward the eye of the hook. And again, just be patient with these rubber legs. I know it seems like a, a pain, but man, it's such a cool fly. Very buggy, very shrimpy. So, tighten down this dub just a touch. And we've got one more wrap in between that last leg. And now, home free. And that last bit of dub right there, we're just going to make one final X. And now we can finish the fly. And of course, that requires the whip finish. So let's add a couple whip finishes. One, two, three, and four makes the first whip finish. Pull down to make sure that knot is snugged. And then one more for good measure, like so. Trim out the thread. And let's put on just a little loon hardhead here. This is hardhead clear. And really saturate all those thread wraps. And if it gets into the dubbing a little bit, it's not gonna hurt this fly. It can only make it stronger. So by all means, don't be shy with the head cement on this guy. Cause this, this fly does get chewed up and often. All right, so now let's go back to these legs. Now our first set of legs, you remember, we tied in roughly just past the length or to the end of our antennae. And that looks great. I like that look. So for our middle set of legs, I'm going to trim those roughly quarter inch shorter than our first set. And then of course that third set gets trimmed quarter inch less than the second set. Like so. And if there's one last thing you want to make this really, really buggy, go ahead and get your brush out and I've got the Swiss CDC dub brush here and I'm just going to release some of that dubbing and get it flowing toward the head of the fly and then I'm going to turn it over and do the same thing on the bottom and again not something you have to do but I, I do like the bugginess of it 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 gives a little softer uh, texture and when you're cast into you know easily scared bonefish that does matter and there we go now that's brushed out aiming or angling toward the front and looks pretty good and so let's take this guy out for a second and I will show you so there you have it a mantis shrimp and again this is a pattern from Bob Viverka, who is no longer with us, but he left a legacy of some really great fly designs, and this is one of them. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I hope you tie a bunch of them. I hope you go fish them, and keep in mind that you, you don't need to be bone fishing to, to cast a shrimp, sea run cutthroat, a bunch of species, you know, anything that's anadromous and has spent any time in the salt water will quickly, quickly recognize a shrimp and is they are happy to eat it. So thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed it, please hit like and subscribe. Leave any comments below and, and we'll be sure to address them. Thank you.